We're grateful for the past mercy. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They're new every morning. And tonight we celebrate the faithfulness of God. Give me a few moments, I'm going to preach a little. Amen. 
just a little bit. Tell somebody just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Okay. The word of the Lord, amen, amen, uh, finds us tonight in the Old Testament. It starts with the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 7. 1 Samuel, chapter number 7. I see some of you have your Bibles, some of you have your smartphones and your iPads. However, amen, you have it. Please grab it. I'm reading tonight from the King James Version of Scripture. And actually, the entire chapter presents itself uh, in the form of our textual consideration. But I will start at verse number 7. And let's end at verse number 13. 1 Samuel chapter number 7, verse 7 down to verse 13. If you have it, holler, I have it. All right, can we read together if you have King James Version? Let's read together. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to pray unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. So far, the scripture. Please direct your attention with me to verse number 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I would like to tag the text tonight Amen. A celebration of survival and future victory. Would you tap somebody and say, Neighbor, celebrate, celebrate your survival and your future victory. Father, we thank you now for this witness. We pray that you would charge it with your power. I ask now, God, that you would give us, Lord, clarity and precision in these few moments. I pray for open ears and hearts and minds to receive the truth of your word. Do it for us again and will not fail to praise you. We ask these mercies and blessings in Jesus' name. And all that agree with that prayer said, Amen. Yeah. Let's practice survival going down to your seat. Somebody make some more noise in this place. Don't you? Ah, many people, many people, many people see history as a waste of time. And some would rather focus only on the present and the future. Amen. However, a true spirit-filled believer, amen, we cannot afford this attitude. Uh, from history, amen, whether ancient or modern, we see how God and humanity have interacted in the past and can determine what course of action is wisest in the long term. 
Jeremiah says, look for the old path. There's something to be said about what God has already done. But you will never understand or appreciate where God is taking you to until you have an appreciation for what you have already been through. The good news is when you're anointed and in the will of God, God will not let you look like the hell you have been through. That's what I say. I know that's right. I know that's right. So now if life is going to make any sense, Dr. Craig, yesterday's experiences must have something to do with today's living. You can't appreciate a man until so. So yesterday's experience now become the foundations of tomorrow's victory. See, so your future has already happened in the mind of God. Our Kairos, amen, our Kronos, rather, is that space of time implying a necessary or perhaps a needed delay. In contrast, Kairos is an occasion. It is a set time. It is a proper time. It is fixed. It is definite. Life begins in Kairos, but it is manifested in Kronos. Ah. And so, as we move forward now, Ecclesiastes says something very unique to me, amen, as I looked at this again, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, if you're taking notes. Uh, the prophet, amen, tells us here, amen, that is Solomon, that which has been is already now or present. God works from the end and then backs into the beginning. That which is to be, meaning your future, has already been or in the past. In every change, there yet remains a permanent. So the main features of your past now are the products that are manifested in the present. So God requires that which is past. So you have to look and then at the past means and the ways and the privileges, including the blessings, how God works you through even when you didn't realize that it was God all the time. Old folks used to sing a song, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, when the Lord gets down so heavy and the weight is shown upon my brow, there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. Would you tell somebody in your journey that your future happened yesterday? God is working on your side. Come on, tell somebody else, God is working, God is working. Oh, I need a house here. I need somebody that's ready to celebrate your survival and celebrate your future. And how I know God is working here. I don't see it all the time. I don't understand it all the time. But I know He's working. Open up your mouth one more time before I move on and say, He's working, He's working. Soon, his compassions fail not, and they'll be morning and we celebrate the faithfulness of God. So the past sorrows and the distresses, they begin now to have a testimony service. Note now, amen, from Paul's writing, amen, in comparison and contrast, amen, to the saints at Corinth, book number 2, chapter 4, verse 7 to 9, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are persecuted, but not in despair. Ah, uh, we are cast down, but we are not destroyed. And so the history now of your past is actually what thrusts you and motivates you and mobilizes you to move forward. And so I announce tonight, amen, in Bethany Church, after 90 years, God still has more for you. Time. We're not living in, in what we would call normalcy. I took issue in, in with our president elect. I mean, I take issue just a bit. And he said, We're going to make America great again. Now, I know I'm being recorded, but I'd like to get my little testimony in here. My question is, When was it great? And who was it great for? Now, that, that's the world is 
this time. But now those of us that walk with God, we don't need a president to make something great for us. God just used the people. But the real truth is if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your, I feel like preaching tonight, and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will. I said he will. And I got a witness here. real quick here. The history now amen, of the judges after Samson was moral decay, amen, idolatry and widespread infidelity to God. The word of the Lord was precious in those days, but the Bible says there was no open vision. Interesting statement. The book of 1 Samuel now with Saul and David showed the actions released and the rewards for obeying God. The thought here, see, when worship gets gets in order and when praise gets pure, amen, the worship now that is performed genuinely and properly, amen, the Lord granted Israel victory and he will grant us victory when we keep the worship pure. Amen, amen. Without compromise. That's why everybody can lead the worship. We can clap, we can join, but everybody can lead. See, see, the people that lead worship have to be pure and clean and pure from God. Are y'all hearing me over here? Who shall dwell in the hill of the Lord? He will have clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul of the vanity. Your soul is sinful. And so, so when worship, amen, is corrupted by deceit and greed and, and false motives and, and, and see, what happens, defeat will always follow. True worship in spirit and in truth will change your future. When you worship right, your future gets changed. When you praise Him right, your future gets changed. I know what it says on earth, but in the courts of heaven, when you worship Him, worship changes your future. It changes Him in your thinking. It changes your family. It changes your bank account. It changes Come on, customize it. Change your future. Change your future. Ah, 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 ah. interesting. His name means heard, asked of God, offering of God, or appointed by God. As a boy now, amen, he was taken into the temple, offered to the Lord, and given to Eli to be trained for service. He was the earliest of the Hebrew prophets after Moses and the last of the judges, generally following the Lord and served as a prophet priest and an intercessor. The thought here, the, Pope, the most powerful people in church are not necessarily preachers. Amen. 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 Oh, the most powerful people in church are not the ones that give the biggest tithes and offerings. people in the church are the ones that will get a prayer through and get the presence of God to come back. That makes you powerful. Here in life, here in life, here in life, and I'm sure this is not the issue here in Bethany, but here in life is the issue in the body of Christ. We have gifted folk and faithful folk. I have found out that the faithful folk don't tear up the church. It's the gifted folk that won't be faithful
to be in God's presence and you still have not reached his agenda. Uh, I know that's a little tough for some of you. And, and see, some people are glad for their Sunday morning 11 o'clock fix. And that's about the only touch they get if they get it at all. And the rest of the week as well, whatever happens, happens. All right? But see, on the agenda now, it moves you from access to administration. When the anointing falls and the anointing is ready to work, we need to declare who God is. All right? If healing is needed at that moment, then we need to declare Jehovah Rapha. He is the healer. Amen. If there is victory needed in some area, then it should be Jehovah Nisi. And so in verse 7 of our text, Satan the devil comes back again. Let me help you. Just because we had a good prayer service and a good Sunday morning service and God showed up, God got delivered and set free, trust me, the devil's going to wave his ugly head again. The Philistines now had heard, watch this, the Philistines had heard that Samuel was interceding and the children of Israel were gathered together at this place called Mizpah or the Stone of Hell. When you start gathering together for help and cry unto the Lord, things are going to start to shake up right there. Now what is happening, they gather at Mizpah, amen, and uh, Samuel is praying, he's making sacrifices, and the lords of the Philistines, they decide they're going to attack Israel again. Listen, let's not, amen, loosen our grip and loosen our focus because we shouted over one victory. I'm glad you got the victory last year, but you need some victory this year. I'm glad you got the victory last month. You need some victory this month. I'm glad you got the victory last week. You need some victory this week. I'm glad you got the victory yesterday. You need some victory. I wish I had my And so your attitude has to be, God, I'm staying where the help is. And the Bible says when they cry to the Lord, and then even in their fear, God began to work. Watch this. The Bible says they were gathered together. Somebody holler, gathered together. Let me say something and just hear, amen, and punctuate. Everybody that is gathered together is not necessarily assembled together. Just because we draw a crowd does not mean we are harnessed to get something done yet. So there can be a gathering without an assembly, all right? With all the cooks in the house. You can have flour and butter and eggs and flavoring and all that stuff all in front of you, but you still don't have a cake. But when you put the ingredients together, oh, that person. Uh, and when you stir it, uh, I had a mama, amen, that could make cake, amen, without a recipe. I wish I had help in this place. Mama would take some flour and some butter, amen, and some flavor, and she stirred around, and she would get the singing and, and praising, and all of a sudden, there was a cake come out of that. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, you don't have a cake until you put the ingredients together, and then you got to put it in the oven at the right temperature, and leave it there until it's done. Mm. Some of us stop too soon and stay too long. Another message. When the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Uh, but the good news is, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers him out of them all. Verse 8, Israel cries to Samuel, cease not to pray unto God for us, amen, and it indicates, amen, I want help, but there's got to be intercession harmonized together. The powerful people in the church, as I stated, are not just the gifted, but those that are faithful. Verse 9, now Samuel offers the offering, and I'm just about there, saints of God. Literally, there's an ascending, amen, when worship, amen, is pure. That which goes up, holy, consumed, complete surrender. Ah, verse 10. But the Lord thundered.
thunder you did with a great thunder. Look at someone and say, neighbor, when you sacrifice, God shows up. Come on. Look at somebody on the other side and say, when you make the right sacrifice, God shows up. I need some help and witnesses in this house. When you make the right sacrifice, God will show up. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When, 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 when the wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Oh, I like the old king. I will make the darkness light before you. <laughs> What's wrong? I'll make it right before you. All your battles I will fight before you. And a high place, I'll bring it down. When you walk by the way, I'll lead you on the fatness of the land. I'll feed you. And a mansion in the sky, I'll feed you. And a high place is coming down. this God, the Bible uses a term, he discomfited the Philistine. Interesting, interesting etymology here. He discomfited the enemy. In other words, they were smitten before Israel and God allowed the enemy to attack themselves. Some things that you just wait on the Lord. And be a good courage. He let the enemy cancel himself right out of your life. Oh, I wish I had an amen up on that. He hunted them. They started to attack each other. So what happens now? Literally, amen. When you look at the etymology here, God speaks to the enemy and throws the enemy into confusion. See, why you giving God praise? What you don't always understand, God is confusing me. When you shout hallelujah and say, Lord, thank you anyhow. God, you're going to make a way somehow. While you're praising the Lord, God is confusing the enemy. And he is not going to let the enemy take you down. Slap somebody say, I'm not going down without praise. Open up your mouth. Look at someone and say, neighbor, right here, right here, 
They literally chase the enemy out of their own territory. Check the text. They chase them from Mispa, where they got the help, to a place called Jeshana. And while they were moving, they were literally slaughtering the enemy while they moved. Y'all not get me yet. In this next victory, Bethany, you're not going to have to stand still to get rid of some demons. You just keep moving and you'll slaughter them all. So, so, after the ashes, he sets up a stone in this spot and calls it hitherto. Meaning, so far, the Lord has helped us. We sang this song back in the day, we come this far. And the Bible says, 
says they were at peace. Their enemy left them alone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I need to find my way back to the shore tonight. Uh, and I need you to kind of go with me here for just a few more minutes. When you get to that point in your life where you can celebrate your survival, when you can celebrate, amen, even when nobody celebrates with you, when you can lift your hands in your kitchen, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, all by yourself. As a matter of fact, I don't need a church to preach here. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Yeah. 